Boy, you think with their history of doing exorcisms and running around chasing ghosts, you think they would know better. The Conjuring! The devil made me do it! Released in theaters and on HBO Max in 2021, and is directed by Michael Chavez, who has also directed such films like Worst Date Ever, Regan, and The Curse of Lalaloria. And this film is starring, again, Patrick Wilson and Vera Firminga, returning to the roles of Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are real-life ghost hunter exerciser demonologists whose real-life tales in their book The Demonologist would make you crawl into a corner. It's that scary. Does that translate to this movie? Yeah, we'll see. It is the 1980s, and Ed and Lorraine Warren are assisting with an exorcism of little adorable glasses-wearing kid David Glatzel. But during the exorcism, of course, things go wrong. Ed Warren nearly dies because the demon is giving him a heart attack, and the boy's sister's boyfriend makes the ultimate sacrifice and allows the demon to enter into his body so that the boy can be spared. Several days later, though, the boyfriend starts seeing very scary images, and unbeknownst to him commits a heinous murder. Now the boy is on trial, pleading not guilty due to devil possession, and Ed and Lorraine Warren are going out searching for ways to prove his innocence. Or at least that's what the trailer would let you think is what the movie is about. Yes, they kind of mention that, but then that whole courtroom aspect, kind of getting it into law where the law of this country admits to the existence of the devil, gets put to the wayside, and then we just go into a generic Ed and Lorraine Conjuring tale. Now, I first watched the Conjuring films last year, actually, and those things, I think, are terrifying, in particular the first one. There were some images in there, some jump scares that had me jumping out of my seat. I think they're absolutely terrifying. And then when we go to Conjuring 2, I'm introduced to the idea of CGI darkness, to where you look over into a corner, and you know in real life that there's no way that that corner is so, so dark, and everything else is so well lit, even though it is a little bit dim, everything else is so well lit, and it's just so freaking dark in that corner, because something's gonna jump out at you. And then moving on to Conjuring 3, James Wan decided not to direct this one and hand over the reins to someone else, which I think is a good idea. When you get into a franchise, sometimes if the same director is directing and it's only their vision over and over and over again, it can become very, very stale. Look at the Transformers franchise. So I was excited to see what they were going to do with this. And also the notion that this was supposedly being billed as a courtroom drama. So you have exorcisms and courtroom drama. I mean, that's going to be the best movie since Ghostbusters 2. What we get, though, sadly, is a very formulaic paint by numbers, this is kind of the same thing that we've seen in the previous Conjuring films. I really hate saying that because The Conjuring is one of those franchises that has helped me get into the horror genre more over the last year. That and my partnership with GingerNutsOfHorror.com, which they give me screenings on all these mainstream horror films, independent horror films, and you get a nice variety of bad quality and good quality horror films. The Conjuring, I thought, was near the top of that list. And I don't mean to say that this film is terrible, because it's, it's not. If this is your first Conjuring film that you are watching, I think you would enjoy it way more than I did. But because this is my third viewing, I haven't seen any of the Annabelle films, or The Nun, or Loria, or Lalora, whatever that film is called as part of this universe too. I haven't seen any of those spin-offs. I just want to stick with the Warrens. But we have the same beats in this film from the previous two installments. They get called on a case and they start doing the preliminary exorcisms. And it's kind of scary and you think that things are done until you realize they're not. And then Ed and Lorraine Warren, there's some conflict there, there's some tension there where they don't want to keep doing this, they want to go and live a normal life, or one person wants to go and do one thing, and another person wants to be safe about it, but then by the end, after the final battle and they defeat the demon, they have that, that one little kiss. I swear, these Warrens in these films, they only kiss one time, and it's always at the end. They have their one little kiss, and they remember about how they met, and it's all a happy ending. Sadly, that's exactly what we get here. I was expecting them to actually pull the trigger and maybe kill off one of the lead characters. And I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens here, but what I will say is that I was disappointed in that aspect. Because in real life, one of the Warrens outlives the other, and I thought that maybe they were going to address it with this film. But nope, 
Nope, not this one. The ending twist where we find out how this demon is being conjured and how this witch is conjuring him and where this witch is conjuring him. I mean, it's it's basically spelled out for you right in like the first act, I guess, of where it is because we meet someone who seems very off-putting and seems very strange and then we don't see them again up until the very end. I feel like that's a spoiler again. If you haven't seen it, you're probably going to figure out who I'm talking about. But again, I think you're fine. There's there's some nice jump scares in here that got me a couple of times. Whenever there's witchcraft and there's exorcisms and there's demons on the screen and there's no music at all and there's a lot of silence and there's a slow zoom in on a corner or on a bed or on an empty chair, I'm always kind of sitting back. I'm looking away because I know something's gonna pop out. That is here if you enjoy that. You know what also is here though? Really bad green screen. I saw it in the trailer and if anything, that was kind of putting me off for this movie was the green screen of where Ed sees Lorraine on the edge of a cliff and this weird demon hand grabs her by the ankle and pulls her off and Ed's running towards her. Watching that in the trailer, I thought, oh my god, that green screen is awful. But I was thinking, well, that's the trailer. Maybe they will fix it for the actual film. And I don't know what happened, if it was... COVID put everything off and people forgot to actually edit this movie or work on it. I don't know. But the green screen of when they were in the forest and Lorraine is searching for where the body of this girl ended up, that entire thing, you can blatantly tell it's a green screen and it's bad. It's like The Rock in The Mummy Returns bad. Is The Conjuring 3 terrible? No, absolutely not. We get Again, really good chemistry between Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. They know these characters. I love seeing these characters on screen, and I like kind of reliving their stories again with artistic liberties taken here and there. But I do like seeing these stories of potential supernatural elements that have actually been recorded and have been seen in this world. I just felt like there was so much missed potential for this film, portraying it as a courtroom drama, hiring a brand new director to have a brand new vision, the terrible green screen. All of this was just a big miss and disappointment for me. Terrible, no. Formulaic and predictable, absolute. I'm gonna give The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm gonna be watching next, so let's take a look. Shop Girl. Ooh, shop girl. The woman with all the gloves and all of the shopping. Based on a book written by Steve Martin, I think, I know he stars in this movie. He plays the older gentleman that she has, I guess, well, I guess it's not an affair, but just has a relationship with. But I think he also directed the thing. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. I've only seen this once. My wife is a huge Steve Martin fan, at least in a literary sense. I like him from his comedies, from SNL, and a couple of the plays he's written. And this one, I think, from what I remember, it's a pretty good romantic comedy. Kind of strange here and there, and a little long-winded from what I remember, but again, I've only seen this once, so we'll check it out next time. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, just attach your movie recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, have you seen The Conjuring? The Devil Made Me Do It? What did you think about it? Where does it rank in all of the Conjuring universe films that you have seen. Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell, see you on the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of Shop Girl. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.